Hello and welcome to the Society with Fatma Shaheen at PTV World. Literature, as we all understand, is not only considered to be the heart, but it is also considered to be the soul of any society. How has Pakistani literature generally not only evolved so as to shape, rather also to change a particular and very specific social and cultural narratives? This is something upon which we'll be shedding light today. Overall, we'll be talking about you know the most notable trends, which we then, of course, do observe trends which are then brought in by young. Inspiring writers, so to speak, we'll be talking about how we generally now see, you know, this trend where people, more particularly young writers, now talking about, you know, issues or, for that matter, topics which were at one point in time considered to be taboo. For example, issues relating to gender inequality, issues relating to mental health, issues relating to, you know, people's identity, or for that matter, even interfaith harmony per se. We'll also be talking about the role of technology and how that, in turn, has actually impacted Pakistan's literature. Landscape. Whereas, of course, at one end we do see that you know uh, technology has helped people, helped writer foster perhaps better connections. What we cannot ignore is the fact that at some level or the other, it has also led to a decline in the book reading culture in the country too. Uh, in this regard, we'll also be shedding light upon the fact that when we do talk about the very pivotal role of AI, how do we see AI impacting Pakistan's literary industry? Because you know there have been concerns raised in this regard uh, in countries like America and for that matter, even other developed countries, so to speak, too. Uh, all of this today, that too, with an extremely pertinent panel. Let me introduce you uh, to my today's panel. My first panelist for today's show is Muneeb Kadir. He is an author and he is also an analyst. Assalamu alaikum, Jean. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam. Alongside him, I have Ms. Kanza Javed. She is an author and she is also an educator. Assalamu alaikum, Jean. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. My third panelist for today's show is Awais Khan, who's an author, he's a writer. Assalamu alaikum, Jean. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Thank you for joining us. And via telephone line, we'll be joined by Ms. Meher Hossain. She's a journalist, she's an author, and she's also a publisher. Assalamu alaikum, Meher, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Now, before we start the discussion on today's topic, let's have a look at this brief report. Literature is profoundly shaping our society inspiring critical thought and fostering empathy. Young Pakistani writers are now courageously addressing social issues in their work, a refreshing trend that deserves our wholehearted encouragement. Their voices are opening up crucial conversations, shedding light on topics previously undiscussed. The government and private sector are stepping up to support these emerging talents. Financial assistance and mentorship programs are empowering young authors, enabling them to thrive and contribute meaningfully to our cultural landscape. Together, we are nurturing a vibrant literacy community, ensuring that the voices of our writers continue to resonate and inspire. Stay tuned as we celebrate the incredible impact of literature on our society. Welcome back. We just saw this report. Now to get the conversation started with you, Muneeb, uh, when we do talk about literature, and this is something where I just mentioned in my introduction as well, it has that basic advantage of giving you a very unique perspective into the society. If used properly, it can also have that capacity to change socio-cultural narratives. But as author yourself now, since you've just, you know, launched your debut book, how do you see, you know, literature doing just that in our Pakistani society today? I believe literature has the power of starting a dialogue. Otherwise, you know, on social media or even unfortunately on mainstream electronic media, it's all mm. noise. People are shouting over one another. Mm. But what, you know, putting forward your narrative in a book form does is that it starts a conversation, it starts a dialogue, and reading is a very personal experience. True. So when the reader is left alone with the book, mm. their minds might be drawn towards issues which they otherwise would have shunned or they would have said, no, that is too taboo and I don't want to talk about it. Right. So I at least on a personal level, I believe that now was the time for me to write mm -hmm. and to launch myself as an author because there were so many things that I wanted to say in, in your introduction uh, right. of me. You've said that I'm an analyst. Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, what happens is that my analysis gets lost in that noise. Right. So I am giving the reader the chance that mm -hmm. everyone else has now stepped aside, including mm -hmm. the author himself. Mm -hmm. Now you're left alone with the book. Make up your own mind. Right. But I think literature has the power of bringing people together as well. There were a lot of my critics personally. Mm -hmm. 
company mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. wished me all the luck mm -hmm. before my book was being launched and they were saying you know what despite our slight disagreements the larger purpose for which you're writing hmm. that is so close to our own right. heart what is really good about your book about the fact that it is touching upon issues which more often than not writers don't even you know bother to touch upon Absolutely. for example interfaith harmony and then child rights and then women empowerment per se too yes. and that too also coming from a male author like yourself on which i'll come to you kanza and i would want you to add to this further so when we do particularly talk about your domain of work we understand that you have been very focused on fictional literature so overall if you were to make that distinction for the benefit of the audience how would you distinguish fictional literature with other forms of storytelling because there is this general conception in the pakistani mm -hmm. society that fictional literature is that one form of storytelling which actually fosters greater empathy compared to other modes yes that's a very interesting question because not a lot of people in pakistan know that there's a clear distinction between fiction and non-fiction. Mm. So if you speak about non-fiction, it's the essays or journalistic entries and all of those observations which you observe and just pen it down on paper. It's very statistical, it's very clinical. It, mm. But when it comes to fiction writing, mm. it's the creative writing, poetry, mm. uh, prose poetry or novels and short stories. Mm. So that's what my realm is. Mm. And in between fiction writing, you have other genres like literary fiction, which I uh, work on, and mm. then you have fantasy, and speculative which Pakistani mm. writers are now dabbling a little bit but mm. they still refrain and then from climate it. fiction as yes. well yes I think so we have to speak about the environment we have to speak about conservation on a greater mm. uh, level and yes somehow Pakistani that is true Pakistani writers refrain from such eco-critical mm. lens when it comes to work right what fiction does is that it kind of gives you uh, you're writing about the same geopolitical issues mm. or social issues but you uh, conceal it behind a curtain of characters mm. and when you put a character character in a story hmm. dealing with the same social crisis which hmm. you otherwise would read in a newspaper hmm. what fiction does is that you develop this sense of empathy for the character right. you go into their life this greater compassion by that yardstick and also Absolutely. i feel that it's more then you you leave a lot on the reader's imagination 100% yes right. i would want you to add to this avas when we do talk about your work generally we do understand that you again have had that benefit of you know focusing on issues which otherwise people conventionally didn't focus upon but generally when we do talk about the uh, role of literature in any society we have seen that you know uh, when it comes to various social media movements like that of me too movement which became very popular and then of course the black lives matter movement as well but these movements they had a very inherent uh, rather a very profound impact on the literature as well they ended up sparking conversations on issues which weren't considered to be that important before so how do you see our pakistani literature being reflective of the social realities of the political reality of modern society today i think uh, yeah that's a very good question and i think that pakistani literature is changing and uh, it is shaping itself to the requirements of today's uh, social world and mm. obviously political realities the thing is that <clears throat> however still not enough is being done to show what exactly is going on in pakistan so because mm. we as uh, maybe educated pakistanis we live in certain bubbles lahore karachi islamabad we don't even know what goes on in the smaller uh, cities or even the, the rural areas of pakistan mm. so in that re regard i wrote no honor which was a reflection of rural life in pakistan and mm. a lot of people who read it they were like we didn't even know that these things happened mm. and i'm like th this is uh, as pakistanis we don't know this happens uh, right ways and these are definitely those issues which then at a very basic level do require very thorough research to mehr on which i'll take you on board and i would want you to add to this further so we do understand that you've been a journalist and of course you're uh, you know very known publisher and author yourself but overall with increasing digital technology how do you see digitization generally impacting pakistan's literary landscape both for the good and perhaps for the worse too because one thing which is very prominent now is the fact that we do see that with increasing use of technology uh, the popular trend of you know ebooks has actually left uh, that traditional book reading culture behind there's absolutely no doubt that the digital age has helped spread the written word um and opened up markets of uh, different age groups different communities different societies different regions however there's a difference between how it has impacted literature and how it has impacted journalism in journalism it's created a democratization process with regards to literature initially when the version ebook version uh, was introduced there was a lot of fear 
that printed books, traditional books, the market will die out. However, that has not died out. In fact, during COVID, um, the number of sales, particularly for physical books, rose globally. So I feel the digital age for literature has changed in terms of marketing and public relations and generating awareness, as well as creating accessibility to um, authors. But with regards to consuming uh, literature, the consumption, that is very much traditional in terms of uh, buying books. There is definitely more of a societal discourse because of the digital age, which has created and generated more conversation around books. So book reading culture may have um, not increased as much as the awareness of the types of books that are being printed and authors. Right, Meher, your point is noted, on which I'll come to you, Muneeb, and I would want you to add to this further. So when we do talk about your first-hand experience of selling out your book, which you've just very recently launched, would you agree with what Meher said? Do you feel that the e-book culture is something which is now more popular as opposed to people going to bookshops and physically buying books and then reading them too? At least in Pakistan, what I've observed is that uh, because I launched the e-book edition of my book earlier mm -hmm. than the paperback one, uh, in Pakistan, at least, everyone had been asking for the hard copy, right. as it were. Mm. So here we've got that culture that we need to have the book in our hands. Mm. But for me as a writer, it helps a lot that it's out there in e-format as well mm. because the availability is quicker and it's wider. Mm. I mean, it's worldwide. It's more convenient. And, but also, you know, there's another concern that I would like to add here, right. and that is of piracy. Mm. I was reading a forum and people talking about my book. Mm. And one of them said, does anybody have a PDF uh, or file of this? Hmm. Can somebody not just buy it off online hmm. and then share that with me for free? So, you know, hmm. piracy then becomes very problematic and it's of very, course. very damaging. And it's a very pertinent issue and this is something which artists generally complain about, be it issues relating to digital piracy, be it issues relating to even fair usage. So, Absolutely. as a lawyer yourself too, how adequately do you feel uh, do Pakistani laws then cater to copyright infringement, especially when it comes to, you know, protecting rights of writers like yourself? So, we've got all the relevant legislation, we've got the copyright laws, uh, somebody else publishing it, hmm. yes, there I'm protected very well. Hmm. But people downloading files and then sharing those with hmm. other people, I cannot monitor it because right. then, you know, that's where, uh, that's where they're privacy rights come into play hmm. and so that there's a lot of blur, a blurring line between right. these two where which puts writers in a very vulnerable position hmm. and that is something that I believe we need to be talking about so that we eventually do come to a solution right and we definitely need to do that because you see they are very pressing concerns at the end of the day you put so much hard work into a piece into a publication it's so Absolutely. very easily stolen away from you yes. uh, coming towards you concern particularly talking about your kind of work so we do understand that in your debut book you've been telling the story of a woman who was actually going through not one rather various obstacles and you very also particularly dedicated this book to the women in Pakistan so when it comes to generally talking about the Pakistani women today and of course vis-a-vis -vis your work how do you feel is your work then relatable or relevant for the modern Pakistani women today yes so uh, there's one thing which I'm very very um, uh, very very careful about is that whenever I'm writing stories of women surviving or going through various trials and tribula uh, tribulations I always make sure that they're also stories of women who are thriving and are happy mm -hmm. and come out of those obstacles so, you know, if you keep telling the same sad story of a woman going through something and in the end not achieving something over and over and your work is re read all over the Western world, hmm. they're going to pigeonhole a Pakistani woman. Yeah. True. They're going to put her in a certain stereotype hmm. and almost like typecast her that hmm. this, is if the, if this is what the author is writing because an author is hmm. kind of a representative of a larger culture and discourse in general. Definitely. So this is what a Pakistani woman ought to be. Hmm. So I'm very, very methodical and careful in my mm. representation of Pakistani women. Mm. Yes, there are lots of battles that we still have to fight, mm. but there are a lot of things that we have achieved. Right. And there are a lot of success And stories. those are the things which then need to be highlighted. Yes, you see, absolutely. And that too from young enlightened females like yourself. I was coming towards you and I would want you to add to this because I also understand that your book, more particularly No Honor, is very focused on the issue of honor killings in Pakistan. Mm. So when we talk about issues like these, we often hear that when a people like yourself, even artists, 
actors for that matter too when they talk about taboo topics they very outspokenly said this does come with a price it can end up with them receiving backlash from the society so is this a concern which is equally applicable for writers you're like yourself too mm-hmm. I think if you put your work out for public consumption no matter what it may be be it literature or entertainment or whatever I think uh, you will get positive criticism and you will get negative mm. negative criticism and you should be prepared for both mm. I think as writers we have to be prepared for both mm. because um, and I faced that myself with my debut novel there was a lot of uh, lot of praise but there was a mm. certain backlash as well because people didn't want to see Pakistani society portrayed as this and they didn't actually believe that this actually this is how it was right in, in the upper uh, circles of society mm. so there was a lot of backlash about that but what the lesson i took from that is that uh, if you're telling a truth or if you're uh, raising your voice for your country or for your society or whatever then these kind of things cease to matter because in the broad scheme of things in the large grand scheme of things Hmm. you know you're making a change right. so these kind of things will happen but then it all goes back to the narrative that the writer like yourself is setting because then you need to be very sensitive you need to be very empathetic at your own part i would want you to add to this further too we do understand that you've talked about interfaith harmony about yes. child rights about women empowerment generally in the pakistani society through this book of yours <coughs> by the name of paying the price yes. so how did this idea then come about it came about i think it came from the place of <coughs> anger mm. sadness mm. and hope mm. now these are very contrary emotions right. but it did come from a very emotional place and personal in the sense that as an observer mm. i felt very personally about them mm. but interestingly you know i belong to a privileged section of our society mm. i'm writing here about women rights i'm mm. writing about the women rights movement in pakistan about uh, minorities in pakistan as well as child rights child mm. laborers and i am none of these myself right but you know there's that moment when i realized actually there have been moments mm. that in fact my privilege might be putting me in a position of unfair advantage mm. so i have to speak out the truth my mm. truth as an observer and their truth right you that's know, so important you see the then experience. again it's a writer's narrative and their perspective which kicks mm. in then exactly mm-hmm. and that's why i have been emphasizing a lot that when i'm writing a book like paying the price and again you know the words paying the price just came to my mind immediately mm. when i thought that there is a commonality between the sufferings of all those who are the most marginalized in our right. society or uh, you know topics that we just brush under the carpet mm. there's one common theme that mm. they're all paying the price for somebody else's follies for mm. somebody else's um, misdeeds right and is that fair of course it's not and, but then yeah. you see when we do talk about this also from a social media angle because i do understand the fact that you're extremely active on social media platforms too if you were to make that comparison between social media activism and relaying your message to your readers through literature through a book through any form of writing so to speak which do you feel would have a more profound and a lasting impact of course the book uh, and there's a reason for it because in social media we just write impulsively whatever we feel in the moment but mm. in in a book i had to be so careful mm. because of course i was talking about very sensitive issues that it should not offend the sensibilities of the readers at large mm. and also because it's a non fiction mm. book so i i was referencing to real life people mm. i mean people who we get to see public figures on our television screens or we come across them in real life and i've had to name certain people i right. had to give references mm. that what i'm making here is fair comment mm. because i have to save myself right. from defamation so lawsuits as well well that way yes. that that's very good mehr i'll take you on board and i would want you to add to this further so when we do talk about the changing trends one very notable trend that we do see changing rather evolving over a period of time is that now pakistani writers are more focused in tackling or talking about issues which are more relevant to the average pakistani you know as opposed to tackling or for that matter prioritizing issues which were then only perhaps relevant to an international readership so in this regard how do you feel this trend evolving over a period of time and do you feel that this is something which we can perhaps see developing in the coming years too is this something which will be sustainable long term absolutely contemporary pakistani fiction english has changed initially it was being written to cater to an international audience the west over the years i feel that people are no longer interested in doing that but in fact they're taking a lot of ownership they're now writing to explore their thoughts their minds their hearts their feelings which i think is magnificent for pakistan because we have a culture of suppression 
and oppression and for people to come out and discuss this in such a soft and tender way i think it is incredible um they're no longer catering to the west there's very little interest in producing literature that falls within the western limit uh, the, the limited western lens i think this shift is incredibly empowering and i have a lot of hope from young writers and i do think the pakistani literature literary industry will become richer and richer as the years go by uh that's right maher but in addition to that not only richer but definitely more authentic and more compassionate too on which i'll come to you muni when i would want you to add to what she said then we do generally see this now in very notable trend where writers like yourself writers like both of them are generally preferring to basically cater to the pakistani readership as opposed to the international one so uh, why do you feel has this change come across over a period of time because we have had also seen more adult more mature writers talk about issues which perhaps would be of interest to the international national viewership only uh i believe that we are now more openly talking about subjects which are considered taboo mm-hmm. and in fact uh, my co panelists here both of mm-hmm. them you know the topics in in the form of fiction but what they've written it's very much related to what i've written in a non fiction mm-hmm. form so these are the subjects that perhaps we we used to face a lot of censorship over but mm-hmm. somehow now with the advent of social media and internet the conversations have started coming up and they've mm-hmm. started surfacing and uh, for that reason i think that there is an audience out there right. they are very avid readers and mm-hmm. i think more than me as a writer they mm-hmm. were waiting for the book to be published mm-hmm. they were waiting for the book to come out mm-hmm. so there's this growth of reading culture and also with you know the rise of uh, literatures i'm seeing that there are literatures taking uh, sorry literature festivals so they true. are taking place mm. all across the country in different mm. cities although i do feel that in this regard we do need to have definitely more uh, children oriented literature festivals too but another angle on which i would want you to delve upon is the integration of ai that too of course in the literary industry or entertainment industry so to speak and we have seen concerns have been raised regarding this in hollywood too where we have seen writers they've gone on strikes fearing that they might be unemployed because yes. of ai or for that matter using on their creativity per se too so how do you see this problem then impacting pakistan's literary industry do you feel that this is then a very legitimate concern for us too it should be more of a concern to readers mm. because uh, what they are paying for mm. are they getting the value for their money in return or are they getting an ai generated book mm. for instance for us as writers you know mm. of course ai might have a very large brain mm. but when we write something mm. it comes from the heart Right. So what we are putting on paper is all heart, and right. that it's all there is no AI emotions, which can ever replace it. It's all about authenticity, so, and you know AI can just not then replace the depth with which you write. And at least that's not. my viewpoint. So there is no threat from AI, at least for us hmm. who are writing honestly hmm. and from a place of truth. Hmm. On which I'll come to you, Miss Kanza, and I would want you to add to what he said. Then, so when we do talk about the very emerging role of AI, we do understand that it can be kind of that powerful tool in the hands mm-hmm. of young content creators, young. writers because they can in ways more than one also consider it to be their shortcut to success so how do you feel can ai be used constructively uh, that too in a manner it doesn't raise any kind of concerns be it those relating to unemployment be it those relating mm-hmm. to undermining any writer's creativity Yeah so uh, there are pros and cons to everything i'm sure that when books were becoming digital there was a lot of fear mm. around the community in general that mm. people are not going to buy books that didn't stop mm. then hard covers was very much a thing but when we moved to paperbacks i'm sure there was a lot of resentment or a lot of like critique uh, surrounding that as well so mm. i do not think that ai is an immediate threat mm. because firstly ai can uh, just like munib said can never replicate a writer's authentic voice hmm. and tales which are told from the heart true and over time your reader develops this affinity with you through hmm. the words through the characters and they know your voice on paper hmm. they know what is written by a person uh because real writing is also flawed the mm. the plot is going to have lots of follies there are going to be lots of blind spots right. that's what human it's writing it's flawed but it's very real it's very real it's re- leaving a lot to the reader's imagination yes when you translate something on papers anything which emerges from the human mind it is complex it's layered and it's flawed mm. 
when it comes to ai i think writers can smartly integrate it it in terms of research mm -hmm. i understand if for instance if i'm looking for a particular book which is not available here or if i want to write about the cobblestones in a particular street in a particular country and mm -hmm. i don't know that feeling i understand that i have to do a lot of imagination mm -hmm. but ai can sometimes help me right kind of it can understand. help you navigate through so many issues even editing i've yes. seen writers use ai for editing yes. too but then you see it shouldn't be a replacement or a substitute for or bringing out that human emotion yes, something absolutely. which is very peculiar to literary works i'll come to you sir and i would want you to add to this but then again from your own global perspective now we do see a lot of times young writers complaining that they do end up writing books but unfortunately do they don't have that opportunity to get it published to the publisher that they do want to get it so published from so as a young writer yourself how would you comment on that do you feel that this is a very pressing concern for writers in pakistan today I think it's a very pressing concern for uh, writers both in Pakistan and Pakistani writers uh, who want to get published abroad. Right. Pakistan in itself doesn't have a publishing industry. Mm. I mean, mm. let's be clear. But how does a writer survive? How does a writer thrive? Mm. Through advances, through getting paid mm. by, uh, via royalties and stuff. That concept does not exist in Pakistan. The Pakistani publishers, what they believe is that we're publishing your book. Be happy with it. Don't expect anything in return. Mm. Not a single rupee. So we can't really survive on. Nobody can survive. And on you don't will. even have that bargaining power if you're starting. Yeah, off. exactly. Right. And a lot of people don't have. They're so desperate to get published that they agree to anything. Mm. And some of our publishers uh, were basically self-publishing companies, but are masquerading as traditional publishers. They are so exploitative that mm. they're. taking money from the author and they're giving them traditional royalties right not even like if you're self publishing in author to yeah start if over. you're self publishing and also because there's a lot of competition then uh, that way i feel the writers they end up being at a disadvantage per yeah. se i would want you to comment on this but more so from a female centric view point so when it comes to ensuring that we try to address that gender imbalance in mm -hmm. writing and of course giving women like yourself equal representation in literary awards do you feel that the pakistani literary land skip has it been able to do that i believe so yes i think with uh, so many literary festivals happening all around the country if you ever look at a a board of panelists and everything i think there is equal and fair representation that is um, 100% true and when it comes to pakistani writers female writers especially mm. looking for representation in terms of literary agents and publishing houses abroad actually there is a because now diversity is such a huge thing everybody is speaking about gender equality gender mm. um in terms of gender roles and women uh, and all of all of these things are mm. such huge debates mm. so right publishers and literary agents are actually seeking mm. pakistani women who write well pakistani mm. women who represent pakistani culture mm. so i do not think that there is any disadvantage Uh, right kanza on which i'll come to you miss meher and i would want you to add to what uh, kanza has just mentioned in her opinion being a female person it doesn't in any way put you at a disadvantage that too in pakistan's literary landscape but as a female yourself being the most senior on the panel today how would you respond to that do you not feel gender bias at a very core level is something which is equally reflective and seen in pakistan's literary world too gender bias is something that is prevalent in pakistan because it is a product of the patriarchy Now as long as that is there I still feel that the gender gap can be it can't be closed it'll take us many years but it can be addressed by creating avenues and pathways of support for um non male um communities to come forward and put their work in and start a conversation in which we can work with men to create a change that is progressive for all and it helped develop the industry as all um you cannot work without men you have to work with men the idea ultimately is that everybody should be able to benefit from what is produced but another question that i would want to put to you is also about the challenges that not one rather various young writers face a lot of times we see that you know writers they can be extremely talented at a very core level they might not have those skills to put their best foot forward to us to present themselves uh, through the right marketing so to speak so in this regard how important is it in your opinion for writers to learn all these skills when it comes to not only managing their finances when it comes to managing their marketing or even for that matter their operational costs uh, how would you comment on that 
Any journey worth taking is bound to be riddled with obstacles and difficulties. I think what matters is that one continues on. One doesn't lose hope. And and by that, I mean you don't hold on to grand dreams. It just means that you just have to continue finding a way. No step is too small. No decision is too light. Everything comes together. It may not pan out the way you may have thought, but that's just being human. So you see, I think freelancers are making it a career. Uh, being an author, um, fr- sorry, freelance journalists are making a career. Authors still have a long way to go because ultimately you're creating a product. There's a commercial aspect to it as well. You're creating a product. Now, whether that product is successful or not, like any other business, you need to have a marketing plan. You need to have your sales uh, strategy. You need to have your operational costs, all of these And you have to plan it out. Um, Without that, you cannot expect your work to be successful. And finally, you do have to consider the product. Are people interested in your personal story? Or are you able to tell a story that will appeal to the masses? There's a stark difference there. Right, Ms. Meher, on which I would want you to add to aware. So in this regard, when we do talk about this uh, more so from the viewpoint of writers who do belong to underprivileged backgrounds, how do you feel can we generally improve their access to the literary industry? Uh, and also, do you not feel here having better social networking opportunities or having the right mentorship opportunities that will definitely help us push writers so as to create a more valuable literature? I think that's an excellent point that Meher has made. Uh, it's so important because talent alone will not take you uh, very far. I mean, it will take you at a certain, till a certain point, but you need networking to survive. You need connections in publishing. And that is why a lot of uh, writers who are based, Pakistani writers based in the UK and US are much more successful than writers based in Pakistan because right. we lack those connections often. Mm. What I feel is that the government can get involved here. A lot of writers do really well when mm. they get grants. Mm. So in the US and UK, you will find that the Arts Council gives writers grants so that they can focus on their work without having any sort of without having to worry about paying the bills and all of that stuff right. so they can produce good meaningful work if imagine if we get those opportunities here in Pakistan Pakistan would see a huge deluge of right, right. new writers and I feel that it will also add perhaps a better perspective and narrative to the yeah. literary industry too because then again you see people who perhaps do not belong to that you know fluent background exactly. they would be able to break through yeah and this is a very common complaint in the UK mm. as well that a lot of working class writers feel that they don't get representation because mm. they're so caught up with bills mm. similarly in Pakistan we don't see a lot of middle class writers because writing is considered a hobby for right. most people mm. if they have the time for it right. so I feel that uh, that can really help government can step in and mentors as well mentorship right. is very very uh, it's a very good way of mm. uh, improving your writing I feel so I try to do that with the writing institute here but my influence again is very limited of because course. Pakistan is a country of 240 of million course. people what right. can I as one person right. do on which I'll come to you Muneeb and before we conclude today's show so my last question to you would be that when we do talk about ensuring that writers that authors in Pakistan they are not only appreciated but also of their achievements they are put forward in the best light that do at an international level why is it so important for us as a Pakistani society to give due appreciation to them to give due appreciation to writing as a professional per se in Pakistan because a lot of times we see writers they can be extremely talented but regardless of their numerous achievements people might just not take them very seriously because for some reason or the other there is unfortunately there's still societal mindset in our society where writing is just not considered to be a very strong or a very viable career so how would you comment on that Uh, In fact, this mindset has uh, haunted so many writers and for Mm -hmm. centuries, I'm Mm -hmm. talking about legends, uh, they did not have that many readers as much as they gained after they had died. Right. Uh, And that continues to be the case. Uh, I believe that there is now definitely a market, uh, like I've said. And you know why? So because also a lot of your celebrities are writing their own biographies. Or so many politicians are writing that. Politicians them, are right? writing that. Actors. So, uh, you know, uh, reading c- uh, culture is flourishing now, mm-hmm. which wasn't there many years ago. Right. Uh, and I feel at least for me, uh, 
writers are the stars hmm. i mean i am completely a fan whenever i get to encounter encounter them in real life you know hmm. book signing has become hmm. quite a thing so i think that the trend is changing but hmm. more so uh, at least from my personal experience when i've written a book hmm. i'm telling everyone that the content of what i've written hmm. is much more important than me much more important right, than how do you perceive the writer as uh, you know is the writer successful is the writer making hmm. money all that just you know fades in the background the message that one is trying to put forward and i i can i think i can speak for each one of us here mm. what we have written in our books mm. i've read a verses uh, you know vas khan's no honor mm. and i think that the very title of his book captivated mm. me because i knew what he was right. going to be talking about it was and very apt we mm. as readers and writers want to be speaking about things mm. that were up until now not allowed to be uh, you know the doors are closed for them mm. within the public discourse the way fact that we conversing about them success will follow mm. when you are saying things that people want to listen to mm. when you are connecting with your reader All that is when you're making things, that you difference. Know, the, but you see, then again, this again goes back to it that despite writers like yourself, all of you, and of course, so many others who we can't reach out to possibly, they are working to make that difference in the society. But then the question is that are they getting that respect? Are they getting that appreciation for doing so? And this is again in light of the fact that we do see freelancers in Pakistan, more particularly yes. freelancing industry that has really categorically developed over the past few years. But overall, when it comes to changing that societal mindset. at least from my view point i feel that still a lot needs to be done so as to be not only take our local writers seriously but also to promote them and to help them project their best foot forward on which i'll come to you and i would want you to add to this so um, you know when we conclude today's show what is that one message that you would want to give to the young writers out there more so when it comes to working so as to make a difference through their writings yes you have that option of using the pen so why not use it in a very intelligent in a constructive mm-hmm. in an impactful manner yeah so first advice for emerging writers would be to read a lot mm. and to be also very mindful of the subjects you're dealing and if it's a sensitive issue to be very mindful of the way you capture anything on paper because mm. uh, sensitivity is something which is very important for a writer mm. be very socially responsible as well as to how you portray pakistan how you portray pakistani women uh, how you portray pakistani men also mm. if you write one single narrative over time that narrative can have a detrimental effect or mm. cast a negative stereotype about our society other things i would encourage them to do is to also write a little bit about the environment mm. climate change is such a pivotal issue write about covid write about family dynamics identity mm. and um, immigration issues that immigration is something issues, on which you yes i write a lot mm. about that so mm. that also what exactly is home for mm. a man even youth identity crisis because yes. i feel that you know that is that one area which needs to be tackled yes upon. and mental health challenges mm-hmm. which people deal with men often and they repress it that, those are pertinent issues mm. so your work should be overall something which is advocating hmm. something positive right. or uh, something which people have to be more aware about mm-hmm. and like munib often says that you should write about people who live on the margins of society right the marginalized sectors yeah, of the so, pakistani society yes. but then again you see this goes back to the basics which is that you need to have that right narrative you just can't be pinpointing towards the issues you also need Absolutely. to through your writing propose solutions yes, to yes. i'll come to you avas and i would want you to comment on this my last question to you would be when we do talk about overall all changing and changing the pakistan's literary industry for the better what are the areas you feel that we need to work on uh, be it in terms of inculcating literature as a compulsory subject that to at a primary school level or ensuring that yes children that to from an early age have access to creative writing courses or do you feel the system itself overall that needs to be more accepting and facilitative of writers i think all of the above everything you just said we need all of that from the very start we need to foster a culture of reading in mm. kids a lot of parents are now doing it but mm. maybe we'll see the effects of this 20 years later or something mm. but uh, i remember as a child uh, reading was considered to be a very it was a very niche sort of thing mm. mostly it was buying toys and playing sports and this and that that was a boys activities mm. that's what thought uh, people thought was the right activity mm. for a boy to mm. do you know play cricket and all of that i used to read and i was always by my cousins and stuff it was always like what is he doing mm. so i think from the very start we need to foster that mm. and yes we need more creative writing courses but we also need um, 
university level creative writing programs mm. so that the people who do graduate from it and then obviously there needs to be an industry mm. that they can actually get employed in so i think this the entire system needs a, needs an overhaul but it won't happen overnight so we'll pro if we start now if we start today we'll probably see the effects of it 20 years later or something right. but we have to start now i think the private sector needs to get involved the government needs to get in, involved i mean the private sector gets involved when it mm. when it's feasible for it like they made the sialkot airport and everything so mm. why can't they do something for the publishing industry as well right. on which i'll come to you madam and before we conclude today show so my last question to you would be that all in all if we are to wrap up today show then you know how do you feel can young aspiring writers uh, work towards not only making their content their product more relatable but also equally accessible and of course relevant with changing times we have seen uh, technology is advancing that too at a very fast speed day by day so how can writers writers at their own end then of course and show that the product that they produce that is extremely relatable it is very relevant it is also uh, by that yardstick very easily accessible to the masses out there too so what would your view point be in this regard for me personally i believe literature has two roles one it should make progress in society in terms of emancipation of mind and secondly it should open up conversations around subjects that may not necessarily be addressed literature is a very soft but civil form of addressing many many societal ills and also celebrating societal joys um i feel that with changing audience there is definitely an awareness now that the digital age in terms of its social apps is now more damaging and people want to slow down there is a demand where people want to engage in activities where they can feel that they they're able to concentrate their minds they're able to invest in themselves and of course with recent political events such as uh, we've seen in gaza where the universities the written word the literature everything has been wiped out so there's a lot more value and for young writers i believe the digital age works in their favor they can put up their work on social media apps they can create their own podcasts they can now even self publish so i feel that my approach has been different because i certainly want to push for creative freedom but for others i feel that they they can certainly um cultivate their own readership their own work through the digital means because there is a lot of value in literature and that value is increasing and you know that value is something that we definitely need to capitalize on as a pakistani society on which note i would like to conclude today's show thank you so much muneeb thank you Thank you so much Kanza thank you, thank you so much Avais and thank you so much Miss Meher for your precious time today well to conclude today's show we generally spoke about Pakistan's ever evolving and extremely dynamic uh, literary landscape so to speak in this regard we also spoke about the fact that how we now generally see more and more writers more particularly young writers you know actively advocating for social causes that too through their writings in this regard uh, generally if we are serious in of course improving uh, Pakistan's literary landscape then we seriously do need to consider the challenges that young aspiring writers they do come across and of course we at a very basic level also need to as a society start respecting writers start respecting authors for who they are letting go of that typical notion that just because you're a writer just because you're an author that means that you know perhaps you don't have a very strong or a very viable uh, career profession wise thank you for watching the society until next time take care allah hafiz